Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's video, I thought we'd go ahead and look at a preview feature that was released as part of the spring update, and that's mobile task flows. You know, we're getting close to, to, to fall, which means that people are going to start talking fall release and some of the new changes that are coming with CRM 20, you know, 2017. And one of the things to remember with some of that information, too, is a lot of these features that are currently in preview are going to end up making that new release. And so I thought it would be a good opportunity over the next several videos to just look at a few of the different preview features that are out there and see how they might translate as we move forward into the, the coming iterations of the application. Now, obviously, keep in mind, these are preview features. These are not by any means intended for you know production environments I mean use these more for just testing purposes to kind of see how things work but this is one that's kind of neat because it gives you that capability to expand on the business process functionality so you know for example I'm out talking to somebody I have a meeting with a customer or a client or something like that now the next logical aspect of that is I need to create a follow-up appointment or, or do something to follow up to that so what or update that contact so what these task flows allow us to do on a mobile application is very simply push a button that you kind of design it'll then go ahead and create a task flow at which will then have information you would normally see in a business process flow, but allow you to enter that information kind of in a step-by-step -step guidance. Say, okay, I need this information, now I need this information, boom, you're kind of done. Think of it almost like the, the quick create forms, but on a much larger scale because you can actually link in information from other entities. And so I thought we'd go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So I'm back in CRM and really it's it's just a process. So if I go into settings and I go into processes, this is where I'm going to create them. Now again, it's a it's a preview feature. So one of the first things that you have to do from a preview perspective is you do have to go into settings, do you have to go into administration, and then underneath system settings, you'll see all of your different preview features that are available as this particular option. And so one of the options you'll see in here is your mobile task flow. So you'll be able to turn that option on as well as your Cortana integration, relevant search, and, and some of maybe the other items that we'll look at. In, in, a, in a few other videos. But once you've enabled that and you click on OK, that's going to turn that functionality on. And basically what, what happens from that standpoint now is when I go into processes, I will actually see kind of a, a new process option. It, it's, it's not necessarily called task flow, but it's an addition to the business process. So if I go into click on new, I'm going to go ahead and call this sample task flow demo. Now the category is still going to be a business process flow, but because I've enabled the preview functionality, now you'll see that I have an option here to run this process as a task flow, and this will make it specifically available for the mobile client. Now the other thing that you'll notice is you still need an entity because you're still you know, creating a phone call or working through an opportunity or, or whatever the situation is. The difference that you're going to see here is inside the application itself, it doesn't necessarily have to be initiated from there. I mean, I could be on a contact and I could initiate this task flow because I may need to create that opportunity um, or I could be on a you know an account and I need want to initiate this because I have to create an appointment or whatever that situation is but this gives me the capabilities to kind of define you know what I want to do in this situation so I'm gonna go ahead and say phone call and then click on OK so now what will happen is now it's going to go in and it's going to give you a very similar editor to what you would see from a business process flow standpoint. There's a few kind of subtle differences. Obviously, the first thing is it's it's a business process flow, but they now have given you kind of a new option here to add an image. Because one of the things you saw on kind of the welcome screen was there was a button that you could push that would give you kind of a customized look for that. So this is where you could go out to set image find the image that you want to upload and I just have one here that's a generic image that I'll just go ahead and use so I'll grab my image and then that'll upload the image as your icon that you're going to use in the application itself. And so again, you know, be aware of you know what that image is going to look like. It gives you a nice preview so you have an aspect to determine okay what you know what the process is going to look like from that standpoint. You'll see that it's associated with a phone call. Um, that's the entity that was uh, is attached to this because that's what we're creating. And we're creating kind of a task flow for the phone call entity. So what do I want to call this particular page? So I'm going to have different pages that are going to work through this. So I might call this um, phone call. And then I might determine what it is that I want to work with. Well, in this case, I need to select a phone call. And so one of the things that I can do in here is if I hit subject, um, it'll now give me the opportunity to go in and 
select the phone call that I want to work with or create a new phone call using the quick create forms. So I have the ability to kind of do whatever I want in this situation. Now, then I can go ahead and I can move on to however I want to work this. So the next thing that I would want to do, obviously, from that standpoint is capture some details about the phone call. So now I'm going to go ahead and insert stage um, or page in this case. I'm going to call this phone call details. Now, in this situation, I'm still associated with the phone call entity, but I have the capabilities to start bringing in things from different avenues. So maybe I want to have multiple pieces of information captured on this scenario. I could go ahead and create kind of a section or a section label. And so I could call this a section label and I could maybe call this, you know, um, call details. Now I could come into here, add a new step go to my phone call entity and you'll see that not only do I have my phone call entity, but I do have related entities as well that I could work with in this situation. I'm going to choose my phone call entity and I'm going to make sure that, you know, we have a subject for the phone call. I'm going to make sure that we know who the call was from. So I'll go down and find the call from call to the same, you know, standard information that you would want to put into a phone call activity and then do. Now, maybe I want to also have some notes about this. So I could come into here, I could add a section label, and in this section label, I could call this notes. And then maybe in here, I'm going to just add the description field. And I could continue to kind of set this up as needed. Now I could go on if I wanted to, I could add another page. And now maybe in this page, I'm going to go ahead and add a section label. And in this case, I'm going to just call this um, other details. And now maybe in here, I want to, let's call this. So now maybe down here, maybe I want to work with related entities. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to choose maybe the regarding account field. And now I can actually start feeding in information about the account. What's the account number? Um, what's the account name? What's the account relationship type? You know, all of those types of different situations that I may want to know. So the nice thing about this is not only does it give us the capabilities to work with the entity that we want to work with, but it also gives us the capabilities to work with related entities around the items that you would be working with. So this just gives you a little bit more flexibility. So this is just, you know, an idea based upon what you would want to do. So the nice thing about this is, again, this is going to simplify data entry from a mobility standpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and activate this. And once it's activated, it's ready to go. Now, you're at, while it's activating, you're going to need some type of mobility application to work with it, you know, whether it's the phone client or the tablet client. Um, you know, for our purposes, we'll actually be using the, the mobile application just on a Windows desktop application so you can see how it works. But keep in mind that you this is only going to be available when you're working with mobility applications and mobility standpoints. So that's definitely something from a testing perspective that you'll want to look at. So once this is activated, now we can go ahead and open it up on our mobility application. And again, that it is a customized application. So once it's opened up in the mobile app, one of the key things to remember is you're going to have to download the metadata. So once I'm in the mobile app, I've got a couple of different ways that I can access these task flows. Because again, even though they have been associated with an entity, you don't necessarily have to be on that entity to initiate it. So if I come down here just in the application, I can see here's my different task flows. So I've got a few that were created kind of as part of the application, and then there's the sample task flow that we created as part of the demo. Now I could go into, for example, like an opportunity. And in that opportunity, I could open up an opportunity and and I would have the same thing down here where I could come into here and I could access this information because ultimately you're just creating that entity. And this is just kind of a step by step way of of helping you you know, guide you through that process as you're going through. So in this situation, now I could come into here. I could say, you know, update contact It asked me what contact to update if I didn't already have one associated with it. Come into here pick the contact, <clears throat> go in, make my changes, and then go to next, and then work through the next 
part of this. And you can see this is where it's tied back to the account. So this is where those related entities come into play. It's a really nice way that from an application perspective, if you're trying to allow your users, particularly in a mobile interface scenario where you know they don't have a lot of navigation options, to very quickly create stuff, it's a, it's a really nice way to be able to facilitate that. So that's going to do it for our video. Um, so that's going to do it for today's video on working with mobile task flows. Remember, this is just a preview feature. So by no means do I you know, suggest doing anything in a production environment. It's only available with online um, for post update one. But it's definitely something you want to check out because obviously if, it, if they follow suit with what they've done in the past, this is definitely something that's going to be working its way into new versions of the application. And it will really help users more more efficiently navigate through the mobile application. So again, that's going to do it for today. For all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thanks again for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.